Welcome back. In this recording, we're going to talk about the uh, linear regression. Uh, at this point, what we're really trying to talk about is how one variable affects another. Uh, everything else we've done in descriptive um, statistics and that kind of stuff from the, so far has been just talking about, you know, one variable, what happens to it alone. However, there are times when we say that there, there really could be relationships between two things. And one way that we can look at this is if we say that we're, if we're looking at the number of customers that we receive each day at this ice cream shop are related to temperature, we can go up and insert a scatter plot. And in this scatter plot, it says that there's a same team tends to be some sort of um, relationship here that as one variable goes up, the other variable goes up. But what we're looking at here from a linear regression standpoint, this is the y-axis. This is the variable that we're looking at, the one that we're trying to predict. And then on the bottom is the variable that we um, have the data for. What we can do at this point is we can take and right click on the data, add a trend line, leave this as linear, uh, again, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do is make make presentations that the boss, you know, can understand. Linear is easy to explain. Going with an exponential polynomial logarithmic, you may get a better fit to your model, but it's going to be a lot harder to understand. So leave it linear. Don't worry about setting the intercept unless there's some specific reason that you have to have it go directly to zero. Display the equation on the chart. Display the R squared. Okay, I'm going to bring this up and explain what this means. This equation, again, is, it is the simple equation of a line. Y equals mx plus b. b is the intercept. So if we draw this line all the way back across, we should see that it comes out at about 57.5. And that every one point that we come up here, my y-axis goes up 0 0.04. All right. Um, from this standpoint, what we also see is that our y-axis looks like temperature, and this is customers. So with linear regression, one of the things that does come in here is that um, it will do the math for you even if it doesn't make sense. This is trying to tell you that I can predict the temperature outside based on the number of customers that I have. And that's true with linear regression. Uh, linear regression tells you relationships. It doesn't say causation. And the truth is that it probably makes more sense if this was flipped around, you know, where the temperature outside helped me predict the number of customers. If I was to say that this upcoming Friday, I expect it to be about 90 degrees outside, how many customers would I expect? So, Excel did this for you, and the reason it did it this way is that it automatically assumes that the first column worth of data that you give it is X, and the second column is Y. That's not what we have. I'm going to copy this. Let me copy all of it and bring it down. I am going to rearrange the data where temperature now goes first. I'm going to go back up. I'm going to insert scatter plot, standard scatter plot, right click, add trend line, make sure it's linear, display equation, display R squared. All right. Here is the new equation. It says that the temperature, I'm sorry, the number of customers that we have is a function of 11.3 times the temperature outside minus 357 degrees. That means for every one degree Fahrenheit that the temperature goes up, I should expect 11.3 more customers. Now, again, it's a mathematical model. Excel will do this for you all the time. Your job is to go through and say, does this model make sense? All right, that's where the R squared comes in. Hopefully you remember back from your statistics class that R 
was the correlation coefficient. And R could range from minus one up to uh, plus one. Zero was no correlation. Minus one was a negative um, uh, constant correlation, if you will, where the data points, you could completely explain what was happening with the Y variable based on the X variable. And a plus one was a positive um, consistent relationship there. This says on our model, I can explain 0.43 or 43% of the variance in customers with just the temperature. Okay, let me say it again. R squared means that I can explain 43% of the variance in the number of customers by the temperature outside. From my standpoint, that's pretty good because again, R squared is nothing more than the correlation coefficient, which we normally refer to as R, and you square it. So if I take the square root equals SQRT of 0.4314, this says that I have a correlation with a magnitude of about 0.66. And the reason I say magnitude here is that because we square it, it could be negative, um, and the negative squared is a positive. But we can see the relationship here really is positive. See, as one variable goes up, the other variable goes up. All right, again, where I live um, in, in data analysis, having a correlation of about 0.5, so R, equals 0.5, that's a pretty good relationship for me. Because if I do R squared equals 0.5 squared, I'm explaining 25% of one variable based on another variable. All right, so that's kind of the background on linear correlations. What I'm trying to do, again, predict one variable based on another variable. Correlation coefficient matters. You have to be the one who, you know, considers what's the correct relationship here for people to be, um, uh, you know, that, that makes sense to them. And then you need to be able to verify the model to see if it makes any more sense um, uh, from the, is it a positive correlation or a negative correlation? The next thing that we do is that we say there are times when we need to go through and take some sort of numerical or categorical vari variable, and we need to convert it to a number. Linear regression will work if I can put a number in here for the day of the week, because it's possible that this idea of customers may be predicted better from a multiple regression standpoint. Should I add temperature, and maybe the day of the week. A thought is that maybe on Saturdays and Sundays, since they're weekends, that I have more people in the uh, uh, in my uh, in my store. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to assign um, dummy variables. I'm going to sort my data. I'm going to sort the data based on the day. I'm going to call this weekend, and if it's a Monday through a Friday, I'm going to say the dummy variable is zero. If it's a Saturday or a Sunday, the dummy variable is going to equal one. Now, another thing that does happen here with uh, Excel, it likes to have all of the X variables together, all right? It likes to have the X variables together, and it wants, and it needs a, the, the Y to be by itself. So since temperature is one variable that I'm concerned with, I'm going to move it over here. 
customers is here. And then I need to make sure that you have added the um, data analysis tool pack to Excel. You can do that by coming into File, More, Options, go to your Add-ins. In Add-ins, make sure that your analysis, analysis tool pack has been added uh, and you should be able to click it here and add it. You can see here that I've already added uh, the tool pack. Because once you get your tool pack, if you go up to, go back to data, go to data analysis, left click, you'll see a list of things to put in. Regression is what we're looking at. Click OK. My Y range that I'm looking at is, again, just click the numbers here if you click the top. Um, it's going to, it, it only likes numbers. It doesn't like strings. So there's my Y. I'm trying to predict customers. My X range that I'm looking at, I have two sets of them, right? So I'm going to highlight, left click and drag all of this. Make sure you have a 95% confidence interval. You don't need to do all of the extra um, output uh, plots for residuals for this one. You can define the output range or you can have it put in into a new worksheet. I'm going to click OK. And here's what comes up. It says now that I have a new equation. And the equation is y equals mx plus b is the way we normally have it. However, we have two variables. So it's really y equals m1x1 plus m2x2 plus b. Take the coefficient of variable 1 times it, multiply it times variable 1, coefficient for variable 2, x2, and then the intercept. So for this one, what we have is that customers equals 201.9 times, and I think our very first variable that we used um, whenever we switched that over was weekend plus 6.96 times, this is temperature, minus 74.7. All right, here's the way that we would figure this out. Now that we have this equation, I can predict, let's say next Saturday it was gonna be 80 degrees outside. Since Saturday's a weekend, weekend would be a one, all right? So it'd be 201.9 times one plus 6.96. And if I was expecting the temperature outside to be 80, I would multiply that times 80 minus 74.7. Again, it goes through, it calculates everything for me. The next thing that we need to ask is, is this a better model than the last model? Let's go up and look at our R squared. The R squared here jumped from uh, whatever it was, 0.43 up to 0.92. So this model now explains 92% of the variance. The R squared has gone up, which means that we're expl explaining more variance. So therefore, this is a better model. Um, next one that you're going to see is you're going to get into scenarios where the amount of variance that you explain may be going up very, very little. Um, and you may be adding, you know, three or four or five different variables. What we're trying to get here from a good data analyst uh, standpoint is how can you come up with a model that explains a good amount of variance that also has the fewest number of variables possible um, to make sure that it, it all makes sense. All right, that is, that's the underlying concept. Um, what I need you to do is look at the questions and in the questions, what you are trying to do using the industry data, go through and you are trying to predict the 2023 bonus based on the 2022 bonus. So you are going to use 
2023 is your Y, 2022 is your X. As you go down through here, you're going to see, you know, what's the equation, what's the R squared, um, what's the correlation. Don't forget correlation is just the R. What's the linear regression equation for 2022, 2023 when you add industry? All right, back over here. For dummy variables, dummy variables, you need n minus 1 uh, new columns. n minus 1 is the number of items that you're looking at. All right. So the categories that we have, manufacturing, IT, retail, banking. We have four. We need three dummy columns. We need one for manufacturing. If it's manufacturing as the industry, put a zero. Otherwise, I'm sorry, put a one. Otherwise, put in zeros. Do that all the way down through. IT. If it's IT, put one. Otherwise, put zero. Retail, you get the point. Everything is zero except for retail. And then for banking, banking, you don't have to put a column because banking is defined when All three of the first columns are zeros. So that's why we have n minus four. We have four vari four categories. Four minus one is three. We define all of our variables with just three columns. Once you get these columns in, these become x variables. So whenever you do your multiple regression, here is your y, and your x is going to be 2022, and these columns here. All right. Hopefully that's beginning to make sense to you. Also, hopefully it makes sense to you that whenever you plug the numbers in for something that you are trying to define manufacturing, for manufacturing, you would use a 1 times the coefficient, and then the 0 coefficients for these other ones are going to 0 them out. All right. That gets you through Adding the industry, that's going to give you a new R squared value. And then you need to add, answer the question, does it add any extra uh, explanatory power by adding the industry to it? And then the next three questions say, stop, let's break these apart separately and just do, in this case, you're going to use the uh, 2022 bonus and the manufacturing dummy. Run that at uh, linear equation, uh, linear regression, see what kind of R squared you get. The next one, the only variables you're going to worry about is 2022 and IT for your X variables. You get the same point for retail. You get the same point for banking. The last thing is for your industry model, you need to go back and look at the R squared for each of them. Decide if any of the R squared really move you in a much better direction. And here's a hint. They may not, and if they don't, go with the models that are the simplest to work with. All right, hopefully this all makes sense to you. Hopefully you can um, see how to use this, and uh, hopefully, again, this gets you through uh, assignment two. Good luck.